Hello there everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanna do a bit of a continuation on my motivation and magic video. I got a lot of questions on that one to share some self-care witchy tips or things that you can do that revolve around witchcraft and self-care and what I plan on doing and have been doing uh, to kind of help get out of this rut of uh, burnout that I've been in. And so I compiled a list and in no particular order, I figured we could just go through some of the things that I've been doing that have been working really well. And yeah, hopefully you find it useful and are able to find some inspiration to do some witchy self-care if you need it. I think we all do. That's something we can always benefit from. So without further ado, let's get into this video. The first tip self-care thing that I have is very straightforward and perhaps kind of expected, but spend time in nature. It's so important to connect to the natural world around us. It's really easy for me when I'm getting caught up with work or uh, just general life things to not dedicate enough time to getting outdoors, especially now that I'm living in the city. And I feel like that's the case for a lot of people. But I always know that when I get out there and just take that time to just be and connect, it replenishes my soul in such a beautiful way. And that's a lot of what I've been doing these past couple of weeks and it has helped immensely. Just taking that time to meditate and be and connect, it's, it's great, it is invaluable. The next thing that I have been doing that has been really perhaps some of the most helpful has just been spending the time to do the things that I love. I have been crafting oils to make salves. I have been drying herbs and just collecting a bunch of new ones to experiment with. And I've even begun new herbal projects with trying to make some lilac perfume, which is something I've never done before, but I've been really curious to try. But I just haven't done any of these things lately because I didn't feel like I had the time. But I do have the time, and I just decided to kind of prioritize myself in these practices over other things. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be just herbal workings for you. It could be anything that inspires you, that helps you to feel kind of connected and breathes new life into your being. Herbs always do that for me, but for you it could be art, it could be sewing, it could be cooking, or really anything. And on that cooking note, that kind of leads us into the next thing I've been doing. My next tip is to make meals that make you happy. Food is such a big and important part of our life, and it's something I really like to integrate into my craft. And Often when I am feeling kind of burnt out and in, in this situation, I have been neglecting food and all of the beautiful things that you can make it. And so I try to take a little bit more time here to do things and make things that I know I love and really enjoy. And it just gives a moment to slow down. Ultimately, you'll see a lot of these things are just moments of slowing down and being with yourself and giving yourself a bit of peace. Food is just such an important part of our bodies and our lives and you know it, it nourishes us both literally and it can help to nourish us spiritually and, and really uh, do a lot in that way and when you take the time to just step back and create things that bring you joy, I at least find that it helps a lot. Plus, you can share it with other people around you and it helps others, not just yourself, which is always kind of lovely. The next thing that I've been doing is working a lot of sleep spells. I'm not really in the mood right now to do a lot of big workings, but working things that kind of help me to have more peaceful sleep, more uh, longer rest, better sleep is really useful at this moment. And a lot of that comes with herbal medicine cures, but you can also do this with spell decks and all sorts of other things. I have shared on here before um, some clearing away nightmares stuff if that's something you struggle with and sleep spells even so i find them super useful at this time it helps me stay kind of connected to magic and my path while also just being beneficial for the situation i'm currently in in a similar vein to this i've also been doing a lot of tea baths i've shared a recipe recently on a healing one that's more general healing 
uh, but you can make them for any purpose that you'd want or need and specify them to the time that you're in. I really enjoy them. Once again, it's a beautiful moment of just slowing down and connecting with yourself and just letting things be. I think a lot of what happens, at least for me, when I need to just take some time is that I haven't allowed myself just to be and I'm constantly worrying or thinking or planning and making the decision to have this dedicated time of just existence really helps immensely. And once again, with a tea bath, it's a way to work magic into your day, into um, this time where you're kind of trying to heal yourself and maybe you do need to step away. I, I like to stay fairly connected to my craft while also taking a break from some of the bigger aspects. Don't know how to describe that exactly, but um, this is just a really accessible place to continue working when you want to. Uh, but aren't really feeling up to bigger things. And that was a perfect segue to today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Aura. Lately, as you know, I've been really struggling with burnout and the two bigger areas of my life that that has been impacting is sleep, which is super important and just kind of having peace. A lot of life has been really stressful lately. And so I've been using Aura for the last handful of weeks, maybe a month now. It has been one of the more helpful tools in dealing with getting over burnout and all of those things that come with it. For those of you that don't know, Aura is a new mindfulness and sleep app that won the Best of Apple Award and is used by over 7 million people. It's an all-in-one app for your sleep and well-being. It has thousands of meditations, stories, and so much more like CBT, life coaching, and breathwork, and even spirituality. Aura's content is created by hundreds of expert coaches and therapists around the world. And like I said, I've been using it to help with burnout, sleep, and dealing with stress. I'm not usually very fond of apps for this kind of work. I haven't had a lot of success in the past, but this app has really helped me with this. A lot of other apps I've used in the past expect you to kind of fit perfectly into this little niche and only offers a little bit of uh, help in these areas or a very certain kind of content, but Aura is not one size fits all and offers so much. There's a great deal of variety and personalization, which I really appreciate. It makes the difference and I know exactly what guides I like and I can find endless tracks that I love. Besides, there are hundreds of coaches, therapists, and storytellers, so you'll be sure to find one that you love. I am also personally really fond of their soundscapes. They have beautiful nature sounds that's really lovely now being back in the city and when I don't have time to escape out into nature I can put it on in the background while I'm working on other things and it just brings me a lot of peace. Once again this is the only app that has helped with improving sleep and dealing with stress and I'm feeling so much better every single day. Get started for completely free on Aura's website using my special link in the description down below. The first 500 people get a free trial and an exclusive 25% off. Thank you so much to Aura for sponsoring this video. Welcome back. Now this next one kind of works together with my first tip actually, but it doesn't have to, but uh, create a sacred space in your home. I feel like our homes are so, so important to our well-being, And especially for me, I really like it to be a specific way. And I have talked about this before, but it's very important to me and for me to bring the seasons indoors. And I usually do this with bunches of flowers. And so this is a bouquet I got the other day when I was out in nature, all of it I got from the island and it's all just growing wildly out there. And it was a moment of connection and it bringing it in here every time I look at it, it just brings me a lot of joy. And working to make your home into a happy place and what you need it to be can do a lot. For me, I obviously have an excessive number of plants everywhere. If you've seen any of my videos, they are all over the place. And those guys are a big part of creating this sacred space in my home and taking the time to care for them, stepping out of my day and looking at them. You know, I have this guy right here who I have been tending to every single day for weeks and uh, it just, it brings me a lot of joy to get to sit with these plants and enjoy them. And especially one like this who 
uh, didn't wasn't doing so well right after the move and I thought wasn't gonna make it and is now thriving. It only had seven leaves left two weeks ago, believe it or not, and uh, now it's bursting. So taking the time to bring what makes you happy into your space can do a lot and really just help to ground you and give you some of that general nourishment of existence that you need, or at least I need. Then lastly, the thing that's perhaps been helping me the most is setting an intention for the day. This can be done in a ton of different ways. You can set an intention by writing it down, just speaking it, deciding it. You can work with this intention. I really enjoy um, enhancing intentions for a day by uh, using herbal things. So uh, herbal honeys or syrups or um, food kind of to kind of enhance that, take it into yourself. But deciding each day, you know, this day is going to be meant for peace and calm, where that's what I'm working on today, or healing, or creativity, or whatever thing I'm trying to engage with. Setting that intention that day and really sticking to that and, and working through that through the day really has helped me stick to it and just adds a nice oomph to it, I suppose. It's really something that I should do all the time, not just when I'm tired and trying to get back into the swing of things, but it is really helpful in this time to kind of give you some added energy and focus. And I really recommend that if that's something you're struggling with. But that's all I have for some self-care witchy tips and of the things that I've been doing lately and have found really helpful. Uh, let me know any of the ones that you do that help you a lot during times when you need some self-care. I'd really appreciate to hear from you. If you can, I would like to, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out my Patreon. There I share art, herbal profiles, book recommendations, uh, workshops, and all these other fun things. It's been a ton of fun to share things with you all over there. It's a wonderful community and it's really what keeps things running over here. So I really appreciate everyone who's over there and everyone who can. I understand it's not for everybody, but it does mean a lot, those of you that uh, are over there and can. Also, if you haven't seen my other channel, I'd recommend checking that out. There I share vlogs of my daily life, more magic, herbalism, all those fun things. You kind of just see a little bit more of a window in and uh, yeah, it's a ton of fun. I really enjoy creating over there. So I hope to see you at either of those places and I hope you're having a lovely day. Go take care of yourself and I will see you soon.